So Andy, just a quick intro. Um, thanks for joining us today. I know you're really busy, um, but it's been quite a journey over the last two weeks. Um, yeah, it has. So we, we've got Andy Gorman. Uh, Andy Gorman is a leading uh, short game golf coach. He's been in the industry for 45 years playing. Is that right, Andy? That's correct, yeah. You've had... You've started had... when I was, like, you know... Little, <laughs> obviously, reverse. Um, and you've had a 30-year history in coaching. Um, and so the first person I reached out to when I tried these products, when, when they were sent to me, because I just didn't believe that they were going to be as good as they were, in sport, I thought, what is the most challenging game uh, when it comes to the mindset, which was golf. So the first person I reached out to, um, and I've had the fortunate uh, sort of knowing for quite a while, and I've also played with people like Sam Torrance and people like that, but Andy was the first one I reached out to. So Andy, it's not about me, this is about you. Um, two weeks ago or so, I reached, uh, you got your product? Yeah, just a little. Yeah, well, three weeks ago you reached out, and two weeks ago, I just a little over two weeks ago, I started using the products, yeah. Okay, uh, and what have you found about the products? Because the reason I reached out to Andy, because, uh, you know, he's, he's been on the tour, training some of the best players in the world, a lot of best players in the world and youngsters will come to Andy to short for their short game, for their mental game, etc. And um, what I found really interesting was Andy's journey just in the last two weeks and my own journey in golf, but I'm no golf player, but Andy's a pro in it, you know, so he, he would know exactly what it did. My first game, I, I, I shot 10 under my, my handicap and I was like, this can't be true. So I, I wanted Andy's professional opinion. Um, and with what Andy's done, it's quite interesting where he's been from Jamaica right across to, to Dubai and places like that. And, you know, on, and, and, and knows most of the people that's in the game. Um, but Andy had some pretty successful results straight away. So, Andy, what, what would you say the number one issue for golfers uh, on the, you know, on the tour seniors right across the board? Is, is there one thing that you say that messes with the game? It's it's a consistency of, of focus, and, and oftentimes it's part of that. It's almost the X, the X factor of the game. We can go and hit golf balls on the range. We can practice around the greens. We can practice on the greens with our putting. We go through our routines. But the bit that really varies is that that focus. Some weeks we feel good. Some days we feel good. Other days, the next day we can go. You know, we see it a lot with tour players who go out and shoot a really low number on you know day one or two or three, whenever it is. But then they can't follow it up the next day. What's changed? They, they're the same person. The chances are they've eaten the same because there's, you know, there's the psychological sort of, you know, we've got to get the hexes right. Um, you know, to so become superstitious. You know, what did I do yesterday? What was it that caused the triggers? I mean, they're, try they're trying to then find a way of getting back into that same space mentally so that they're in that zone. And, you know, we've got lots of issues, especially with touring professionals where they're traveling around the world. They're, eating variable diets they're on different time zones um their sleep patterns have been disrupted so you know the biggest challenge really is how do they get back into the place where they know they can play their best golf amazing so so really i suppose without further ado it's like talk about what what happened to you in the last two weeks so i you you um you you, you very kindly said that you do a do it be a case study on these products yeah uh, my background yeah. in technology went into the corporate world. I've never, I struggled what you said earlier with sleep. I, I, I won't share the audience, but as soon as I started taking these products, my sleep just did that, just not mm. you know, normalized as that. You know, on the rate, I found this consistency available to me, but cognitively thinking, just, I got back to where I've always, where I was at, at my best. Um, yeah. how, for, for yourself, so, you know, I suppose, should we just jump into the, the the first game that you played and then the second game you played? Yeah, so kind of, I mean, it wasn't orchestrated because we just, I got games of golf booked in, but I, I got a game of golf booked in, which happened to be the day before the restore, uh, the, the products, the, the root products turned up. And I wasn't sure really what I was going to expect when I got to use them, but ultimately, I'd got around a golf book the day before. So it was great to have, in effect, the control round. That was my first round of golf of the year. It was with a client who's also 
a PGA professional. And we'd had a coaching session in the morning, had a bite to eat, and then we went out to play 18 holes to kind of test what we'd been working on. But, you know, as much as anything to start the preparations for the golf season to come. A little bit late, you know, my golf season is, you know, way behind schedule in terms of practice and preparation. There's a lot of things have taken place um, that's caused that to happen during the winter. And so I have got or have got an awful lot going on up here, which my priorities weren't really golf. Anyway, I went out and played and played half decent. And it's fairly typical in the first round of golf that you kind of shoot close to your par score, whatever, whether you're a recreational golfer and you know you're you're playing with a handicap, you're unless you're a total beginner where you've you know just forgotten how to hit a golf ball, you've got very low expectations because of where you're at. Um, you know, and so you go out and play golf and you play quite relaxed and kind of enjoy, you know, you may not do too many mistakes, but you're not going to have too many great successes either. And it was kind of something like that. I think I knocked you around in about 74. Um, it was about what I would have been happy to, to expect. I have zero expectations, but, you know, it's kind of where I'd have expected it to be. I then proceeded to start the taking the next day, start taking... Uh, the root products I started with clean slate, which um, a couple of drops, a couple of times a day, and then tried to zero in um, as well. Same day, you know, I had one in the morning, didn't have one in the evening at that point, but just thought I'll just see how we get on and felt okay. Didn't feel as yeah. if there was anything sort of major taking place. It wasn't like, you know, a massive rush. I hadn't got lights flashing in my eyes or um, you know, felt like I was on another planet. I just felt very normal, but also at the same time, a little bit clearer in my head. I couldn't really sort of almost brighter was probably the right word for it. Um, you know, Becky, my wife, had also said the same thing. We felt brighter. It was actually a very moody day as well. You know, you looked outside and thought, you know, pull the curtains because it's, yeah. it was almost brighter with the curtains closed. It was a horrible day, but we actually felt brighter. And you know, it was just a case of now let's let's see where we go. And I'd got another round of golf booked. I hadn't actually got it booked, but you know, I, I was planning on playing golf, and then the week sort of scrambled by, and I was yeah. sort of nine days in to, to take in the root products. I thought I better start to play some golf. And I kind of looked at the tee sheet, but oh, a couple of tour players there, some a couple of young lads at the club who play on tour. I'll stick my name down with them and and uh, go and see what my game is like, second round of golf of the year, which now the expectations are sort of, well, I don't, I'm never really sure, but they're a little higher than where you started, yeah. you know, on your first round of golf. And I thought, I'll see how my game stacks up against them, but knowing that they're full-time players and I'm not, um, and I obviously coach the short game, so I expect that to be reasonable. And so there's now a little bit of pressure because I'm playing with some good golfers. Um, you know, I thought, give them a go. They played... Uh, 10 holes, the, the loop comes back, the 10th is next to the clubhouse. So they played 10 holes and then made their excuses and left me to the back nine, um, which Becky had joined us on the on the 10th tee um, to have a walk around because ultimately we have a, um, you know, a, a tournament relationship and she's my caddy. So she wanted to see how, you know, the, the products were, you know, helping with my focus on the course. I took a zero in and five drops of clean slate before I teed off. I had okay. some lunch. I'd normally graze all the way through the round of golf um, just to keep my energy levels where they should be. I had plenty of water with me. By the 10th tee, I'd already drank, you know, close to a litre of water, so I was keeping myself hydrated. But at the same time, I thought, you know what, I'm going to try the restore. And so I had half a sachet, but he had the other half, and we carried on. And I parred 10. It's fine. I was level par for the front nine. Kept in touch with the players. One of them was one under. One, one was level par, and I was um, along with me. And the other one was one over. So that was fine, you know, competing. But they weren't really competing. You know, they weren't competing against me. I think they'd have took me to the cleaners if they wanted to. They were working on their games. They're playing in tournaments to come up as well. But it was interesting just watching them and watching what they're doing. But then I turned to the back back eight holes. Um, uh, I hit my tee ball really, really well. My, my drives were, were exceptional. I missed one fairway um, on the back nine. I hit four of the eight greens in regulation. 
uh, and single putted each of, each of those four birdies. I also had the missed shots that I, I had. I had pretty difficult pitch shots to play. Now, being a short game coach, you would think that I have some reasonable uh, capability with the wedges, but this is second round of golf of the year and with no clubs in the bag. And the longest putt I had was from 12 feet, which happened to go in, but all the other putts went in as well. So I had eight single putts in the last eight holes. I played the last eight holes in four under par, which gave me around a round of golf of 68. Now, I would have normally expected, and this is of 45 years' experience, for that round of golf to be closer to a 78 than a 68. That's just me being brutally honest. Like the second game? It's not about... Second game of golf of the season, literally nine days after the second. I've hit a couple of buckets of balls in amongst that, so maybe 250, 200 balls. Um, so it's, you know, I've got no reason to expect to be shooting 68 uh, or making four birdies. Uh, but especially, I can't recall ever, as decent as I am with the putter, um, I can't recall ever having eight put, single putts on the bounce. And where were you? Uh, the, you were saying earlier as well about your driving, like behind these youngsters. These are in their twenties, driving three forty, driving the green. Yeah, and yeah, you're they're half my age. <laughs> <laughs> the bastard. Well, I shouldn't say that on camera, but yeah, these these lucky individuals that can hit that far. I can, I hit it occasionally like that, but it's once in a blue moon. But you were saying they were consistent. Where were you in driving factor? I actually hit a three wood uh, past. Well, as far as one, as far as their drives on the one hole, um, that's partly because of the type of shot that I was hitting. Uh, look, they'll fly the golf ball three hundred plus, yeah, you know, because they're young. I need to get a good flight on it and then get it running to get it out there three hundred plus these days. But um, you know, I, I wasn't that far behind them. I did find that I was I felt like I was about half a club off in distance to what I would normally be doing. Um, Hitting the golf ball nice and solid, that cut the bad shots. I mean, you're going to do that. You know, even right. Ben Hogan, Tiger Woods have hit bad shots in the round of golf and they're playing well. So, you know, I expect that. But, you know, the other thing, really, from my point of view, because this was a test on focus, was that my, I stayed calm. Becky's note afterwards, as she's commented um, in the group space afterwards, is that, you know, I, she's never seen me so, so in a zone and relaxed. It wasn't a relaxed, to, I don't care. It yeah, was yeah. a relaxed level in a zone. And, and then from my personal point of view, I found myself doing things that I did when I was shooting course records and winning tournaments 20 odd years ago. And, you know, to put into context, I quit playing competitively in 2001 and, you know, shot a course record on the day that I did that and, you know, walked away from competitive golf to focus on my coaching, you know, because I, yeah. I believe, number one, I was missing something um you know in terms of coaching putting i needed to spend more time researching that and then subsequently um you know relocating back to the uk um you know from the caribbean so you know when we were now i look at all of that you know i only started competing again in 2019 when i turned 50 and that was part of a promise to my dad um you know as he was leaving us you know that yeah okay i would give the, give playing golf a bit of a bit of serious thought really and and compete again partly because it was my hobby yeah but also because it was to test what i was teaching yeah. and you know uh, yeah but get the biggest challenge when you, you've been out of the competitive field is focus yeah. you know because part of your game is there probably at about 70 percent, 75 percent. you work on that you improve it it's, it's never going to be where it was when you're in your 30s yeah, yeah. in theory in theory, but the biggest challenge I think is because it's, I wouldn't say mental, you know, um, you, you don't have, you, you're in a different space when you're 50 than you are when you're 30. You know what, what can happen, yeah. you, you know, you, you're a little bit more thoughtful, you're a little bit more conservative possibly, um, but, it's, but it's the 20 year gap, of, of 18 years being retired, you know, yeah. in, in competition. You know, and to be able to spice up competition with your with your peers is one thing, but you know, to get out there and actually put a scorecard in your hand and go and play is another. But you know, you've got to do that. You've got to be able to get into a space to be able to compete. Sure. You've got to be able to get into a very clear cognitive space to be able to perform. And you know, I found myself making decisions right at the end of the round of golf that then I became conscious of. Like, oh, hold on a minute, I was doing that when I was shooting course records. 
you know, finding lines off the tee to hit the golf ball in, you know, so I've got the best approach into the flag. And then, you know, hitting that best approach shot, you know, inside the club length and holding the putt. So you're being you're being quite um you know, kind about how good your golf was because you were hitting everything, literally nearly every single um, green shot inside pros green shots. And, and you, what you were, most of them were like within a club length, which is unheard of when you're talking, like, like say yeah. the best is on this week, you know? Yeah, it is. If, yeah, you see I'm here already. Yeah, you're already there. I mean, with in Augusta, you don't see, you don't see them landing that many shots within a putter's length, do you? I mean, that's no. that's pretty. I mean, to have that, I know you are the man that that teaches that profession, but to actually go out and there's two things to say. You 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 gave one of your good golfing friends that does the golfing tour, and we won't mention any names. You gave them something to try. They phoned you back up and they said they've been hitting their best gut like their drives. Um, like, the longest drives more more often. So yeah. his um his words were that I've hit more of my best drives in this last round of golf than I've done for the last year. For the start since the start of the year. Yeah. So yeah, when we when we look at it, it's there's there's something more than just the case of, you know, we're taking, you know, a supplement. We are clearing the brain to be able to perform on the golf course. Yeah. Which is done, you know. Not available. I, I I shared it with a friend of mine that's a GT4 racer and he gave it to his manager who was actually at and Senna's uh, manager in that, and he said, I've never seen the guy not so grumpy and wanting to talk to people around Silverstone. He said, I just saw him within 15, 20 minutes just, just, just get to this neutral position. So if we can do that in golf um, and motorsport and some of the most yeah. challenging games, what... Um, Advice wise, I know everything comes back with money back guarantee on routes, but I think it's more than that. I mean, what is there any top three tips that you can take away from it? Like, has it encouraged your, and not a loaded question, but for me, I've noticed I'm making better health choices. You know, it's, it's cognitively that, well, that normally is a coffee, isn't it, Andy? It is normally a coffee. Um, I made a conscious decision during between our conversations at the start when you introduced me to root products before I actually tried them yeah. that my caffeine intake albeit I'd switched to decaf was going to need to make a radical change I would honestly say that I've been addicted to coffee for most of my life yeah. um, 10 to 12 cups a day on a good day maybe 20 Yeah, I just love the taste of coffee it never affected me until September of last year and, you know, when it, I got a reaction on the golf course, which I didn't like, and I didn't like what happened to me, I didn't like how I felt, and yeah. I've never had reactions to coffee um, in my entire life, but I felt my body was telling me something, so I switched to decaf. Um, but of course, you're replacing caffeine with chemicals, and so I didn't want to be in that space. So I decided that the last round, that, that my the round of golf, my first round of golf for the year was played caffeine free yeah. um, or coffee free, should I say. Oh. Um, and, you know, I was I was fine with that, but I honestly expected a bit of a hit um, at some point because there was yeah. some chemical detoxing going to take place. I'll be honest with you, I've had a, I have had a day this week where I felt that, but it was manageable, very manageable. Yeah. And you know, it came a couple of weeks later. But subsequently, yeah, you know, finding something warm to drink, I'm glad it's the summer coming up, but, you know, finding something warm to drink that is pleasant enough for me has been a bit of a challenge. But that's a challenge I'm worth, you know, I feel is worth taking. I think any detox normally releases, when you detox or you come off something like coffee, you do get a lot of chemicals flying around your body that creates headaches, creates fatigue, creates this, that and the other. And you're saying that you've not experienced that. The other thing that I think is really quite interesting is the um is what you were saying your wife was has flown at a good level with BA for many, many mm -hmm. years and she struggled with sleep on zone because she's been on different time zones for 17 years. I think you said that she struggled with sleep. And to you know, you there was the other point about saying sleep, wife's now sleeping, and 
and, and at a level. Is that right as well? So there's there's a few fringe benefits that happen. There's been massive fringe benefits. You know, we talk about the importance. And obviously, from my point of view, Becky's not travelling now, but has understood very much about time zone travel. Of course, you know, many of us have travelled time zones. So we know what it's like. We know what jet lag feels like. And, you know, it feels pretty, you know, you feel pretty groggy. But Becky's been a mom for just over 17 years now. And she said that, you know, said to us the other day that, you know, even caught me out unawares um, when she took centre stage and said that, you know, I've had my first sleep in 17 years. And unbelievable. So that's an forget the goal. She felt like she slept with one eye open and one ear open for 17 years. And I think that's more important than anything to do with golf. You can't get in a good space the next day if you've not slept properly. We, no. we know that. But, no. but many of us don't even know that we've not slept well because it's normal. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you get into a normal space of, you know, going to bed, you shut your eyes, you could wake up in the morning, you kind of, well, I'll have another cup of coffee and, oh, back in the room. And I think that's where we, we relate to but once you get into a really good consistent sleep pattern um and i felt like i've always slept well but you know i, th I think ultimately i was kidding myself as well you know i don't know you know i can't i've got no data to, to sort of tell you that i've slept good bad or indifferent but i always felt like i slept okay and yeah and um you know but I've, I, I have a very different sleep now in four or five hours you, you know um, because I've got a lot of projects on the go at the moment and it's you know coming out of the winter, they're not quite finished. But getting ready for the golf season, both to play and to coach, yeah. you know, I wanted to get yeah. them out of the way and I've been able to, I feel like I can put a 20 hour day into eight hours, but I'm uh, still doing 20 hours, so I'm more in. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've, I've, I've got a watch that tells me and, 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 you know, there's data. I know that Roots have got a, uh, the ISNS, um, which is a separate science nutrition um, institute that gathers this data and their data is quite phenomenal, but I'm, we're going to wrap up because I know you're busy. Mm. You've got, you've got your agent coming in that you're going to schedule. Yeah. Come into it. We're probably going to do another couple of these and monitor that. But I mean, the products just talk about what have you done with the products very quickly? So you started with what? I started with clean slate. So just a regular dropper. Um, yep. five, started with two drops um, twice a day for three days. Okay. And then built it up slowly. Okay. So on between five and 10 drops at a time now, twice, only twice a day. And that removes and into, metals, toxins, and it literally decalcifies the penile gland. So I think that's where you're, it really helps with, with you know, if... Certain people are religious, they want to get closer to God, but if you just want to get more connected, the penile gland, just, mm -hmm. just research it, people. If you look at what the penile gland does, it's quite, it's quite an important part of, of balance, really. And, and secondly, the, the zero wins. And we've, got, we've got the golden pill. Um, yeah, the zero wins. Take one, you know, take one of these in the morning, one in the evening, interestingly. But ultimately, when we're working with these, um, yeah. within 10 minutes, you you are so clear and focused in what you're doing. And, and you know, it does give you energy, you know, that's, that is, when Clayton, you know, just, I, I think it's a clear energy. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. You, you're not using energy that you have and wasting it. You know, you're using it well. And then subsequently, you know, this is this was what I took um, to restore. You know, what I took is a sachet. Um, took half of one of these on the 10th. Um, having yep. hit my tent, uh, the t shirt on the tent, and that was me. I was, I, I got so much energy out on the back nine, but energy to focus on the shots. I just yeah. took my water and, you know, had the restore, and that was me, you know, I was off. So, yeah. you know, having one, one of these, roughly one of these a day, um, okay. well, half, you know, which is keeping me going. Half, half, half of one twice. Yeah, yeah. no, 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 I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm up on this. Oh, you're up on that. Um, <laughs> well, it's interesting when I know. You know, when we first spoke to Clayton, one of the founders behind this, mm -hmm. said, you'll feel it in 10 to 15 minutes. And I was like, yeah, right, whatever. And I, I literally took two zero ins on a golf course once and I, I shot my best. I did a par four, uh, par four, 250 yards. I know you told me I cut the corner a little bit, but with a five iron to get it that far at my level I, and on the edge of the green from the tee, I was just like, what the hell is going on here? Um, but my story that I really, the story I really love is Christina Rahm, the, the lady behind the, the doctor, Christina Rahm, Clayton's partner, her methodology and why she went from big pharma 
to natural products. All of these products are natural, aren't they? They're, they're all acceptable on the golf course. You can't be, there's not, Completely. if you're going to get tested. No chemicals, online. they're vegan, yeah. friendly, you know. Yeah, ultimately, anybody can take them. Yeah, nobody's so going to get into trouble research. with them. So I oh, think oh, crikey, yeah. You have to do your research, don't you? I mean, you're not going to be advising pros that you, this isn't safe. I think that's the thing is we're working in a survival mode at the moment because we've come out of the pandemic. So many people are going, oh, I don't want to, you know, change what I'm doing to survive. But I think people need that. I, I call it, someone said to me who runs about 700 doctors, COVID was an intelligence test and we've got to get independent, self-independent to look after and how. So Andy, I look forward to hearing Absolutely. about the next story and get you on the golf course. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it as well. Tournament start next week. So um, it might see me here. You might see you there. <laughs> Any tips for Augustus? Who do you reckon uh, needs a bit of restore back in the life for Augustus? Or oh, there's quite a few of those. There's quite a few of those. Yeah, I think it would be unfair to name names, but um, yes, there's a few that I can think of. That you'll be reaching out to, to share your story. Absolutely. Yeah, very right, much. Andy. Well, Andy, I uh, wish you a great day, my friend. Thank you for joining us. And I will speak to you very, very soon.